Hi, this is Sapnil Bhartia and welcome to TFR Insights. And today we have with us Murli Balcha, founder and CTO of Trilio. Murli, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Sapnil. Thanks for uh, inviting me to the TFR. Uh, if I'm not wrong, Trilio has announced Trilio Wall for Kubernetes. Uh, tell us a bit about, first of all, what is the need of Trilio Wall in the Kubernetes ecosystem? Or before we go there, talk about, you know, when we talk about security and all those things, what role is Trilio playing in the cloud native landscape? When you look at the evolution of um, cloud technologies in general, right, um, it starts with uh, um, state less application because those are easy, easier to build. Um, we saw that evolution with OpenStack and we saw the same evolution um, taking shape with the Kubernetes. Kubernetes uh, the containers and the parts, they are pretty much stateless, um, but then you have the stateful applications that are that are deployed on, um, on, on the proven technologies like virtual machines or the bare metal. Um, but that that model cannot last long because now you have two or three management planes at the platform that the users need to um, need to manage to get their applications up and running. Um, so once people are comfortable with the Kubernetes and uh, their, uh, their their stability of the Kubernetes, so people are gradually migrating their stateful applications into the Kubernetes platform too. So now, you know, it's, it's a full stack of, um, uh, of the application that is uh, deployed, that is being deployed in the Kubernetes and more and more users are feeling a lot more comfortable uh, deploying the stateful applications and managing the stateful applications in Kubernetes, right? Um, so that is the evolution that we have been seeing uh, since, um, since, since 2015. And you have done a lot of work in OpenStack, you know, and that's where actually I, I, I came in contact with Trilio. So how much of that experience uh, that, uh, or, or the problem that you have seen customer face, you are bringing to the Kubernetes world? If I can uh, take a few minutes to basically talk about like what is our philosophy um, about these uh, backups for the cloud applications. Um, you know, when, when you look at the backup is not something new. That use case has been there in the industry for almost like 30, 40 years. And uh, there are very well-known um, companies who have been building phenomenally good backup products uh, for, um, for, for, for a long time. Um, you know, we have uh, people very good with the file-based backups. That is the starting point of the backup. And then when the virtual missions um, came in, like with VMware, they kind of changed their um, application, their, their solutions to basically fit the uh, VMware landscape. But then uh, when the cloud paradigm is coming, when the microservices paradigm is coming, you cannot really take those, um, up and take those backup solutions that are primarily for cloud, uh, client server architectures um, and somehow extend um, uh, those architectures to fit into these new models, right? Um, when you look at the cloud, it is not only at the scale that we are talking about, but also the operational um, aspect of it. Now, VMware, um, you still have a central administrator who is who is basically managing uh, the virtualization uh, infrastructure. But then when it comes to cloud and the cloud is deployed at the business level, at the enterprise level, it's not, on, it's not there is no one central administrator. So it's the cloud admin who is basically building this cloud and then rolling out this infrastructure for other business unit to consume it. Um, so, the usable, the, the way you are using the cloud is changing, the way the cloud, um, the scale aspect is changing. So you cannot take um, the, the, the architectures that are built like 30, 40 years back and somehow uh, retrofit into, into the cloud paradigm or the microser microservices paradigm. So when we started our journey, um, first with OpenStack, um, we, we, we took a hard look at what the landscape is. And, um, and we realized that none of these products really fit the cloud needs, right? Um, so the, that solution need to be built uh, ground up, um, just like any service, like compute as a service or the network as a service. The backup is a backup functionality need to be a service and that, is avail that should be available to tenant. And that's what we did. So um, our solution is um, completely software, software based solution. Um, and uh, we have a self-service uh, aspect to it. So each tenant is responsible for their for the SLS of their applications. Um, it's infinitely scalable. If your platform can grow from 10 nodes to thousands of nodes, our solution just uh, just scales. And our deployment model is very sim very similar to how the cloud is managed. Like uh, if you are using some kind of DevOps tools like Ansible-based deployment, our solution can be used the same thing. 
And also, there are other things that we take very, very seriously. One is we don't want to define our own proprietary hard formats when we are storing a backup images. We leverage um, what is available in the Linux and the open standard space, and uh, we leverage those standards and the standard tools for creating our backup images. So that also makes it a lot more easier for people to migrate um, or move um, these applications uh, from one cloud to other cloud, which is also very, very important. So these are these are the fundamental aspects that we basically hit, uh, no matter what solution we develop. So we started with OpenStack, and then we, we, um, we created a new product for the Red Hat virtualization. Now, we created a completely new product that is built from ground up um, for, as a cloud native application for Kubernetes. Um, and uh, we released, uh, we have an early access release um, last month. Um, so though we have two products um, that were already there, but we did not leverage any of the code base um, that we had with those things because uh, for Kubernetes, it needs to be built uh, natively and, uh, and uh, Kubernetes principles. So we we basically chose to build everything from ground up. If you look at cloud native space, it's, I mean, we talk about cloud, but OpenStack word is a different word versus cloud native word. You know, we, we talk about Microsoft, we talk about functional service, we, we, uh, mostly we talk about stateless applications. So how different is the data protection landscape in Kubernetes world? What kind of trend you're seeing and is the use cases are evolving, use are growing, that you felt that, hey, you know, we have to bring it here. It's an encapsulation of applications, right? You can build a pretty complex application, a three-tier application within a VM. So you can have um, a database application running in the VM, you have a front-end application running in the VM, and they have the middle running in the VM. Um, so if you take the backup of the VM and then restore the uh, back, uh, restore the VM from the backup, you pretty much restore the application, right? Um, that's where the virtualization journey started. And then when uh, there's uh, um, Apache-based uh, big data architectures are coming, those distributed applications, the definition of application kind of shifted from a single VM to multiple VMs, right? Now the application definition is you need to protect all the VMs that make up your application, not just a VM, and all the storage that, that is associated with those bunch of VMs into one application. Now, fast forward, the Kubernetes, uh, the, the definition of application is uh, is changed again. So with the Kubernetes, um, it's not one container or a bunch of containers. Um, they don't define the application. There is a high level abstraction uh, that defines the application. So the concept of application in Kubernetes is still evolving, right? But I think we have few things that we can go by. Uh, one is, um, you know, Helm uh, recently graduated into the Kubernetes. So Helm is one way of defining a cloud native application. So you can basically um, uh, have a Helm template that defines what artifacts that is needed and that make up this application. It could include a database application. It could include a front end uh, application or a middle, middleware. It could include all the configuration maps and then secrets, everything that make up an application. Um, our people can use a operator framework to build their applications that are stateful in nature. So uh, the Kubernetes gave us some um, some tools on how you define this uh, cloud native application. Um, so our solution is based on what a cloud native application is based on these tools. Um, so our backup and recovery is built around these uh, these concepts. Um, a Helm release and the operator instance are some label based. Um, way of recognizing all the resources that make up the application. If you look at Kubernetes space, there are already a lot of players who are, are offering, you know, data production, you know, Kasten is there, and a lot of, you know, Cohesity is there, a lot of other players. So what value is Trilio bringing? Uh, uh, there is also a difference between the, the expertise of Trilio is totally in data production versus, so can you talk about the, the unique value that you are bringing to the Kubernetes ecosystem? Well, you know, there are players, but, there are no mature players in Kubernetes yet. Um, you know, when you look at Casten, uh, they've been in the in, in the industry for two years, uh, two two and a half years. And um, when you look at uh, other companies, their primary focus has been in the virtualization market. Um, they've been very successful. Uh, they are successful companies. Um, in the Kubernetes, I think the the space is still evolving. Um, you know, the challenges are tremendous. Um, you know, we haven't really scratched the surface, like what the what the challenge of uh, building a Kubernetes with based the backup solution for Kubernetes is. 
Um, but um, I think one thing we can confidently say that we have a tremendous um, experience we gained building this cloud um, native, not cloud native, but cloud specific backup and recovery solution. We understand um, the challenges with respect to deploying this um, solution for the cloud uh, cloud environments and um, the scale aspect and the performance uh, and performance aspect um, in these environments, right? We have this unique strength in the space that no one uh, in the industry can claim that they have. Um, so we fall back on that experience when we build our Kubernetes uh, solution. So um, even though Kubernetes solution is a software only solution that we have, uh, but I, I think we, we pretty much provide almost all the features um, that the enterprise users expect uh, from their backup solutions. Because of the, this crisis that we are going through, the COVID-19, that has also kind of changed the way people are building infrastructure. Uh, we used to tell people, hey, move to the cloud, but suddenly it has become an urgency. The companies who have very good cloud strategy are the ones who will survive. What would the world look like once we set up new norms? Uh, what would the cloud look like and what role will data production play there? It is still a recent occurrence. Um, you know, it's uh, two months um, or three months, uh, but it did uh, disrupt a lot, right? Um, the way uh, the way we live, we used to live that disrupted a lot. But I, I think we can probably fall back on some of the catastrophes that happened in the in the past. Um, I, I think the the disruption that this has caused probably we can relate to what what we experienced in nine after nine eleven, right? Uh, before nine eleven, I was working at EMC, and uh, before nine eleven, disaster recovery was not much of a much of a concern for a lot of enterprises. Um, they did not really think about putting a disaster recovery plan because um, backup's fine, but disaster recovery plan kind of expensive proposition for most of the enterprises. They balked at, the, uh, at that at that idea, but then 9/11 accelerated that um, that trend, and uh, you know it's not it's not luxury it's not a luxury anymore. It for most of the enterprises, um, a disaster recovery having a disaster recovery plan um, is is a must. Um, so that changed how we start looking at um, um, the enterprise applications, their high availability and the durability of the applications. The COVID-19, I think this is an inflection point again. It, it probably gave a different set of lens um, to look at like how we run the businesses. Um, you know, uh, the, um, pe most, of the, most of the enterprises now I can see like, um, even before COVID-19, working from home is not, is not very much encouraged. There are very conservative companies um, that they feel comfortable employees coming um, into the office and then basically working um, between, uh, between four walls. Um, but COVID-19, most of the companies are feeling a lot more comfortable for, for their employees working from home. Um, we ourselves, we, we did not miss a beat about um, you know, COVID-19, everyone working from home. So what is enabling this one is, is the cloud, right? Is the remote ability to basically work remotely using all the cloud-based applications. Um, so this one is going to accelerate further. Most of the people are a lot more comfortable now moving from on-prem uh, to cloud because this one gave a proof point that you know, things can work. Um, so, and and when you, when you look everything in the context, um, obviously Kubernetes is is right in the center, building cloud native cloud applications, um, which provides this uh, uh, platform agnostic uh, portable aspect of the uh, applications. So, um, you know, uh, Kubernetes is going to play a central role, uh, central role in the evolution of the applications and probably accelerate the evolution of these applications into the cloud and mostly in the multi cloud, not single cloud. Um, so we see we see a lot of good um, um, good up, uptick in, in our business, but also evolution the adoption of Kubernetes in the enterprises. So when there is an uptick in business, how do you plan to bring your product to this market? So not only is positioned very well, it's also understood very well. Launching a new product um, is always a tricky proposition, right? Um, it, it, we don't take the mentality of uh, um, we build like they come and buy it, right? Um, so we have a very um, very focused uh, approach to the market. Um, we are very much partnered with the IBM and Red Hat, right? We've been uh, we've been partnering with um, on the OpenStack space and then the Red Hat virtualization space, and now it's a natural progression for us to basically, uh, you know, partner 
our our go to market very much aligned with uh, red hat and ibm and uh, we've been doing it uh, for months now working very closely with red hat ibm um, so our our uh, our solution is already certified in the I, I, red hat marketplace and also it is certified in the ibm marketplace and we will be soon announcing uh, cloud pack certification both in the uh, data as well as in the multi cloud management so all this um, all this all the work that we've been doing with our with with this partnership i think will it will help us um, with a go to market um, strategy do you already have a road map for to the wall for kubernetes or what does your cadence uh, release look release cadence look like i think there are two two folds to that um, question one is um, you know we 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 have the experience with openstack openstack is is uh, community driven and they have a cadence of 6 months we always try to keep up with uh, the latest uh, uh, release of the openstack but we did not uh, di digress more than one release um so we will will be following the same approach uh, with uh, with the kubernetes um i think pretty much all the vendors like uh, even distros like red hat um, they are they are they are like one step behind uh, the latest release of the kubernetes we will follow the same cadence so that is one thing in the road map i think this is very interesting this is my um, you know uh, very favorite topic here now i think we we have a much uh, bigger view of kubernetes kubernetes um, it's not like um, we 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 consider that as as a application delivery but also application deployment platform right um think about um, the iosi iso image or install shield um you know in back in windows days where where the where the uh, where the applications are packaged as uh, install shield packages and that's how they deliver um but uh, kubernetes not only you package your applications like a container images but also kubernetes offers a way to deploy this application so it it provides this phenomenal platform that is lot more durable um highly available platform that applications can run a uh, lot lot more uh, the stability of the application can be assured by the platform itself um but but if you look if you look at what uh, what red hat is doing with the kubernetes um uh, with their open shift platform and what vmware is doing they have a bigger plans they they are they are thinking about like converting the virtualization and the containers into one management plane right um with the vmware project specific and then with the um, uh, with the kubevert uh, or cnv initiator that the red hat has has uh, been pushing for the last one one and a half year um so uh, there is an evolution there is a convergence of um, this virtualization and uh, container platforms into one one management plane and we have a very similar um, approach for that so we want to use um, our kubernetes plan the the solution that we built for the kubernetes as a foundation um and then use that to expand to other markets uh, for example we have we have plans to uh, address the public cloud markets based on our solution um and also uh, gradually we want to address the vmware market when when the project specific comes in so um if we have a much bigger vision about where we want to go with our solution that is based on the kubernetes we also see kind of evolution or emergence of edge computing we are we are not talking about very powerful servers you know we are talking about a, what 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 role does data can data production play there it has a big role to play in the edge computing and wherever there is a persistent layer wherever there is and uh, you need to have a durability of the application whether whether they are running on the edge or they are running on the central location um they need to be protected right um so the, you know it's not like it's not the first time like we are looking at the edge um when you look at um, you know, for example um, the carbonite carbonite is they started the evolution from backing up the laptops uh druva is another company that is looking at edge um, backup right um we are seeing edge uh, computing um in the enterprises especially in the telecoms telecom and uh, you know communication uh, based companies where they have this edge um, devices that they run some application that require some backup and they need to they want to persist those backups in a central location uh, for data governance and uh, for safe keeping purposes um 
yeah we, we we see we see the we see the edge, com, edge computing playing a role here murli thank you so much for taking time out and sitting down though <laughs> we are sitting remotely <laughs> not in the same room this is the new norm but you know thanks for not only explaining the data protection landscape uh, in the in the cloud native world but also about really work and i look forward to talk to you again thank you hey yeah, thank you swapnil for giving me the opportunity thank you very much and stay safe 